face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And on this week, we're looking upon a two soul fighting types, Sok versus Fro. Basically, these two Pokemon was introduced in Generation 5 as to, of course, be in some kind of a sibling rivalry. Two definition of a fighting types are going to be defined here today. And basically, we have the speedier threats versus the bulkier threats. And uh, they are been on par with one another, but works actually fairly differently between one another. Even though they share to some extent a lot of the moves here, they function with these moves in different fashion, which makes them very interesting to talk about as a whole. And we're going to go over their course typing, their move pool and stats and ability to see, of course, which one of these two are really better. So first and foremost, let's talk about fighting itself. As always, fighting type, since the both represents this is a soul fighting type, it's not a bad typing on its own. You resist bug, dock, and rock, which means that you're not weak to knockups, you're not weak to stealth rocks. And when it comes to weaknesses, we have fairy, flying, and psychic. All of these are usually resolved with a steel type, making a soul fighting type actually naturally benefit very well in a team combination. I'll even go so far and say that fighting type is probably one of the best defensive typing in the game, mainly because it does actually complement other typings fairly alright. While a dual combination is always helpful for different reasons, usually they also actually nerf you in some extent and make you weak to other stuff that you have didn't have to resolve too. So with this in mind, I'll definitely say the soul fighting type, very good typing, benefit these two Pokemon very well. So without further ado, let's talk about Sock itself. Now, Sock is a very, very interesting Pokemon because it's actually fairly alright in every tier, though it does reside in NU at the moment, being Generation 7, and was in RU eventually in Generation 6. This is a Pokemon that, due to its stat distribution, has been one of the best choice band user or scarfer basically because it has a very high attack stat and very high speed. It is basically a Heracross without the dual typing. And it does this very right, and you have already, as you guys can see, 75 HP, very fair, 125 in attack, yeah, that's quite high. Both defenses are 75, and trust me, that's actually fairly decent. And the speed tier 85, yeah, you bet your sweet ass, this functions very well as a revenge killer or a wall breaker, and does those roll very good. The only thing it really has working against it is that it's not as speedy as it might have been forced to be to be able to capitalize on a possible being a sweeper. Due to 85, Scarf variant is more likely to be just that, a wall breaker or a revenge killer. So the choice band is usually what I would consider the better set or, you know, anything that complements its abilities. Because its abilities are inner focus, which makes you either not get flinched or mold breaker, who nullifies any defensive abilities, such as, of course, levitate and being able to hurt with earthquake, which is really good for the likes of Weezing, but also, of course, the Rotom, who could possibly deal with you, or at least try to. And, of course, Sturdy, which I think is the most benefiting here for Sock. While it's actually defensively not that bad as a fighting type, Sturdy does resolve a few issues, and quite frankly, back in the days, being able to take a Brave Bird and retaliate, yeah, that's kind of cool. Talonflame basically had no chance versus this round one, making Sock a very interesting Pokemon on its own. And quite frankly, just as it is, it due to sturdy, it can capitalize on a few really niche moves, such as reversal, for example, and just having Salak Berry, if you want to capitalize on being functionally very well with the likes of Bulk Up, you are actually allowed to do so, making Sork one of those Pokemon that, on its own, can deal with most matchups just fine. Now, when it comes to the move pool, I think Sork is touching what I would say a perfect variety of move pools. It lacks a few things to really make it the prime example of fighting type, but it's definitely up there. We have close combat, reversal of course, with earthquakes and headbutt, power up punch, and payback and giga impact. The reason I have it there is because C moves, being able to do the breakneck blitz at 200 base power, yeah, that's kind of good actually. We have stone edge, rock slide, poison jab to hit, of course, the fairy types, block to lock in Pokemon, which can be very benefiting if you have the sturdy set. Dual Chop, we shouldn't have no reference, is a Dragon type move with 40 base speed, hits twice for any Sash and Sturdy user against you. We have Elemental Punches and Fire Punch, we have uh, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch. Ice Punch primarily is the one you want to use versus those pesky flying types. 
Focus Punch, in case you want to capitalize on that with C-Move, to get it with Superpower, though trust me, Close Combat will always be the better option. Knock off the bread and butter of the fighting type, being able to hit those Presky Ghosts. Low Kick, in case you don't want to wheel yourself down and you know you're facing a heavier team. Pain Split, with Sturdy, trust me, that's a freaking benefiting move, and very, very annoying at that. So that's the complete move pool of Sog, and quite frankly, it really just show and tell one thing. This thing will always hurt. It does bring the punishment and it will not allow any Pokemon versus it to survive versus it at all. The only thing that I really think are holding it back is that it lack priority. It doesn't have Mac Punch or Bullet Punch and it lacks Drain Punch. It might not sound like a big deal, but for a Pokemon with this caliber and sturdy and whatnot, it is to some extent whittled down by not being speedy enough to hurt something as good as it could have. And also of course lacking Sword Stance as a Wall Breaker that is unfortunate, it means that you need to capitalize on Choice Band or Life Orb, and that means that some abilities are actually outnumbered or just thrown out the window, such as Surdy, of course, but then again, if you're using Life Orb, Mole Breaker is going to be your bread and butter there, but as a whole, I think Sok is a tremendous Pokemon, and it's rare or not if Rogue can actually even deal with it, or if you'll just throw it all away. Haha! <laughs> but yeah, about throw. It is a very, very interesting Pokemon, and I think it is a really undiscovered Pokemon for many people. We already talked about the fighting type and how defensively complementing it is as a whole. So, Sork is, while it is the speeder version, Fro is the defensive variant, and it already shows on the HP. 120 HP, yeah, that's a lot. And 100 in attack, that's not that bad, actually. And split defenses of 85 which is very hard to get a complement that really high red HP stat. But, as you guys can see on the speed here, it is definitely slower. Photo base slower than Sog, making it one of those Pokemon that are focusing on defensively and actually retaliating and soaking, which with that HP stat and defensive stat, are able to do fairly alright. Now, when it comes to the abilities, we have the same abilities here in Inner Focus and Mold Breaker, and both of them are just as versatile on actually the throw, but it definitely should be said that Mold Breaker are benefiting Sork a little bit more, but what separates them is that Sork is sturdy, throw has Guts. And Guts on a defensive Pokemon is a very good thing, because it means that you can play yourself defensively, you're not that heavily whittled down by actually a status, and if you get status and the Pokemon is supposed to whittle you down by Toxic, they pay a steep price with you having to boost 50% in your damage output. And while 100 base power, as said before, is a fair stat power, it definitely should be said that with Guts, things start to hurt, and hurt quite a lot, making Guts one of those really really good abilities for any defensive Pokemon, but probably more for defensive Pokemon that has the defensive capability to pull this off, such as Fro. So when it comes to the move pool, it has the same move pool as Sork, they are so very much alike when it comes to the move pool. The things that are different here are, of course, the Storm Throw, Circle Throw, and Body Slam. Body Slam, of course, for the obvious thing, being able to hit your Pokémon and being able to paralyze it, yeah, that's going to be a real annoying in the long run, and of course, Throw can actually pull it off. But while it's not as speedy, nullifying the opposing speed is just as good as actually, of course, not being able to outspeed them, because did you have the chance to do that while damaging them? While it's a risk, I would say the same risk as using Skull for actual defensive capabilities, and it actually could pay off. Storm Throw, really good, clearly, you know, always hit critical hit, making any defensive Pokémon who want to do bulk up or iron defensive as you, to just throw out it out of the window because you always deal with a crit and of course it definitely should be stated here that fro lacks the close combat making storm fro and superpower its primary move and storm fro is definitely the one you want to go with since you're always going to play that defensive role or at least be a defensive wall breaker we also have circle fro which always will force a switch such of course dragon tail and roll it is one of the best facers actually in the whole game due to this very reason why well the rest, Sleep Talk variant with Knock Up or Bulk Up together with Circle Throw, really, really dent the team's fairly right because Sork as a whole already fairly hard to kill and be able to rest Sleep Talk and face posing Pokemon with spikes and whatnot. Yeah, the damage will rack up fast. And you really have to stop this Pokemon before it becomes defensively too hard to stop. And with Bulk Up and, of course, Guts Boosted Rest, Rest Boosted Guts, well, how you want to cut tackle it basically means that your circle throw will always do a little bit too much and will do more if it is sleeping, making it a very, very 
unpredictable Pokemon whether or not you're gonna go for knockoff or of course a circle throw and as a facer as stated it is probably the best in the game due to this very reason of this combination alone though it's not without issues circle throw of course means that you can't hit the ghost type and that's always a thing when it comes to the filler moves as I said before we have the earthquake we hand sedan but power up punch payback uh, Stone Edge, Rock Light, Poison Jab, Block, which definitely could be very well rounded to be capitalized on. Bull Gap, Fire Up Punch, Focus Punch, Super Power, of course. Ice Punch, Knock Off, Low Kick, Pain Split, Thunder Punch. It does have everything that the Sock already is doing, but it doesn't hit as hard as Sock. But at the same time, it has the capability of hitting them at all, which is a good thing on its own. And one thing definitely should be said here is when it comes to the Pain Split, that Fro has the accessibility of actually having a possible recovery move, but due to its a lot of HP, it does fall a bit shorter. Pain Split rarely will cover enough for you to actually be capitalizing on it, and it's unfortunate in my honest opinion. I think Fro has the capability of doing this quite right, but it is willed down by the focus of, of course, being more HP than the defenses on its own, making Fro. While a good Pokemon on its own, it definitely is whittled down that not having anything that could recover. And also, of course, the same issue as Soul Care. I think it would have been a fitting throw a lot more. Priority moves. One really look at the Hiriyama and kind of figure this one out as fast. Being able to have Guts and Priority really, really does make you shine a lot more. And I think Fro definitely would have needed stuff like that that could actually make it not as easily revenge killed while the Pokemon is defensive. One really has to come to an exception that there are special threats here who will take you out. And not being able to actually have the speed with Guts to resolve that is going to make Fro a one-dimensional set for any set matchup. Now, Fro makes for a really good Assault Vest user and it's definitely very underrated at that to get it with the likes of actually being a Flame or Trick Room abuser. But the Storm Fro is just not necessarily kicking it all the time i would definitely say close combat is the most benefiting one but the reason for storm throw is of course that it just makes sure that it doesn't lose any defensive stat but it also makes sure that you aren't hitting with the fighting stab hard enough and i think that's really unfortunate because that would have made throw a lot better and of course you know the always stuff where circle throw will only resolve so much and being a phaser is always good but always be the phaser is never a good thing in a meta environment so what it basically boils down to is if the phaser aspect of throw is better than a wall breaking aspect of the sock. And while I'm always a fan of Bert and Ernie on the from the Sesame Street, I'm really just gonna resolve this as it is. Um, when it comes to them, the NU and even RU, I think they are on par with one another. I really do, but for different reasons. I think they are benefiting different teams depending on their design. We have the number one phaser of the game, which definitely does a good job versus probably one of the best wall breakers on the finance side of the game being Sock. And I think as stated, depending on the team design, they do their job very good depending on what they're facing and makes for a very good fighting type as a whole. Now, with that said, we also have another aspect and that's always going to be the league concepts. When it comes to leagues, Fro simply can't hold up. Um, it's really, really boring to say it as it is, but Fro has one really good set, and that is the Phaser variant. If you are aware of that in a league concept, that means that you can prep for a choir, right? While Sock actually does push everything on a team naturally choir, right? The Choice Band, Choice Scarf, Life Orb. We have all the options here. We had, you know, the Endure, Salak, everything come to place with Sock, making it a very tough Pokemon to actually prep for. Which also on its own, due to the league concept and actually league concept alone, make it the number one choice between these two because it works for much more teams versus a lot more tougher matchup than Fro due to its natural low speed never ever could have actually been dealing with at all. And I think no one was necessarily surprised about the result. I mean, there's a reason Sok is more used than Fro. It is much, much easier to use. It has the more clear functions of a team and it works for more teams than Fro actually. Fro's really focus on I would say the both your teams, the facing theme. And while it does work quite right, Sock really, due to versatility alone, just stands out a lot more than Fro. And as a whole, I really couldn't see this matchup going anything different. But I'm very glad I got to talk about Fro because it is a really good Pokemon. I'm, I definitely think that it's underrated because, well, let's face it, most people really want the high stabs from the fighting type, and Fro does not represent that, making it less used. 
even though as a whole it's a very cool Pokemon and has a lot of things to offer a team. Um, so with that said guys, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and quite frankly I really hope you enjoy me talking about these two Pokemon because I have a bit of a meme between them. You know, I've always hated Sock in a new last generation. It really did my days a lot longer than it was supposed to. And I'm glad I got the chance to actually just celebrate it a little bit and the things it does well because it does things really well and it does them so well that I think it is even underrated in any other tier actually. I mean, this is the Pokemon that actually can one it KO a Rotom Wash in UU right now just because of the Mole Breaker Choice Man variant. It is something else and it's very, very interesting to see that. And um, I think it's very unfortunate because it just is fairly alright and I think it's cool. Um, but yeah, with that said, guys, as always, thank you for, of course, watching. And uh, join us next week, where we're going to look upon a matchup I think has been very, very long overdue. So join us then for these two beasts.